Hi, my name is Chris Brennan. I'm the orientation technician here at Stones RV. Uh, I've been here for about two years now. So if you're coming in to get a new trailer from us, uh, we're going to take you through a walkthrough of your trailer and I'll be going over all the essentials, um, how to operate all the appliances on your trailer, everything you need to know to go camping on your first weekend. We're going to start up front here with uh, our battery, propane tanks and our uh, electric tongue jack here. Uh, up front here we've got uh, your 12 volt uh, standard RV battery. Uh, it's a deep cycle battery, um, a lead acid. Um, most important thing to have here when you're, when you're towing the trailer, you must have this hooked up at all times. Um, and if you are going to be doing any dry camping, you will be running your lights and some of your appliances off your battery. So it's not a bad idea to have a solar panel uh, hooked up to the trailer here so that you can camp your whole weekend without running out of juice. Um, in the winter time, you're going to want to take your battery off the trailer, take it inside, preferably store it in uh, a warm, dry area. So if you're going to keep it in your garage or your basement, do want to keep it up off the concrete floor so that your battery won't uh, freeze and crack. Um, we've got two 20-pound propane tanks here on this unit. Uh, when you're operating these tanks, uh, you will choose specifically one of the two tanks. Uh, to do so, there's a little regulator switch up here on the front. Uh, with a black nozzle. You just turn that nozzle to the specific tank that you want to use and then unscrew the tank here on the top uh, to the left to open that tank up and that will provide propane to your system. Uh, once that tank drains you can switch your nozzle to the other tank and actually take that tank off to go get it filled while using your secondary backup tank. Uh, you never want to keep this switch in the middle as then you will be using both tanks and you'll have no backup tank when you run out. Uh, this little cover here just floats on top of the tanks and uh, is held down by the air resistance when you're towing. So you always want to make sure that this flap is facing towards the trailer so that it doesn't catch in the wind. And uh, last thing to remember, when you are towing, make sure that you have your propane tanks shut off. From up front here, we've got your electric tongue jack. Uh, so this is going to be a nice upgrade to the crank models that some units have. Uh, if your unit does have a manual crank, you can pretty easily upgrade to the electric tongue jack. Um, this is going to help us when we are uh, hooking up the, the trailer to the hitch on the truck, as well as when we are actually leveling the trailer from the front to the back. So you see underneath there we've got uh, one block. When you are setting up your trailer to camp and you're leveling it, you typically want to use a couple blocks just to make life a little easier for the jack itself so you don't have to have it fully extended. Um, and you will, you will use this to level the trailer front to back. We often suggest having some stick-on levels to the trailer or just using a carpenter's level on the frame to, uh, dis to discern when you're actually leveled front to back. Uh, when you're hooking up to the hitch, you will use this jack to actually take the pressure off your weight distribution hitch and make it easier to snap your bars into place. So this is going to be very helpful because it's usually raising and lowering the, the uh, truck about four times when you're hooking up your hitch. So great upgrade with the electric tongue jacks. On the top here we have the, uh, the port to operate your jack manually if you happen to lose power. Uh, so you can use the drill uh, with a socket on there to raise and lower your trailer if your battery is dead and you're stuck somewhere without any way to operate your jack. On this side of the trailer here, we've got uh, a little bit of an information section for you. So you've got uh, your gross tow weight, so that's going to be the maximum weight of your trailer um, when it's loaded down with all your stuff. Um, you've got your VIN number and everything located here as well. Uh, on this sheet we have the recommended tire pressure for your trailer. Uh, you should be checking this pre-trip and you always want to make sure that the uh, tire pressure is matching what's on the trailer uh, even if it disagrees with your actual tires themselves. Uh, and then we've got your inspection sticker here. Um, always make, check to make sure this is valid. On all new trailers uh, you get a three year inspection. On all the hideout models the, you'll have a, a dual door front compartment that runs across the front of the trailer. Uh, we do recommend that you store your heavier items up front when you are towing as it does make your tow life easier. Uh, these doors are equipped with a common lock. Uh, you'll use this 751 key here to open it. Uh, do keep in mind that this is a common key so most campers at campgrounds are going to have a similar key and they're going to be able to open your compartment doors as well. So you don't usually want to keep anything too valuable uh, in these compartments. 
Um, all the hideout models are equipped with little door latches to hold up your door out of the way when you're um, getting your stuff in and out of the compartments. The 28 PHS is equipped with a uh, single slide. Uh, the operation for said slide is inside the trailer. So we'll take a look at that once we get into the trailer. Um, important things to note with your slides. Uh, here you'll notice there is a rubber wiper seal that runs across uh, the, so the side of the slide. There's also a similar one that runs across the top, the other slide, and a little bit underneath. As well, you have a rubber de-seal here along the side. This seal is going to uh, keep your slide sealed when uh, it is in so that you don't get water inside there. And the wiper here is going to keep the water out when you've got the slide out as well as kind of clear off the slide as you put it in so the water doesn't get inside your trailer. Um, with these rubbers, it's important to keep them conditioned with a spray foam conditioner. Uh, you want to do that twice a season. It's part of your general maintenance. What that's going to do is it's going to keep the rubber from drying out uh, in the sun cracking, getting weather cracks, stuff like that. If this seal does start to dry out, it will eventually catch inside of the slide as you're pulling it out, and then you will get water in the slide. Um, underneath here, we've got the track that the slide runs on. Um, so you've got a little motor that runs the, the slide in and out. Uh, if you happen to lose power, you can actually just manually crank in the slide there with a wrench. It's not a whole lot of fun. It will take a little while, but it is good if you happen to be stuck in a situation where you need to tow and you've got no power to your slide. Here we have access to your storage under your bunks. Um, so it's quite a large storage area that you can access from inside the trailer uh, through the bunks as well. Once again, that's gonna be the 751 key, so your common key. Um, one thing to note about this storage area, uh, since you can access it from inside the bunks, uh, that does mean that someone with a key could theoretically get inside your trailer through the bunks. So a lot of the times with this area, we will recommend that when you store your trailer for the winter, you do put a couple screws into the um, wood panel underneath the bunk to hold it down so no one can uh, sneak their way inside there during the winter. So here we have what some people find one of the most daunting aspects of camping. Uh, this is your black and your gray tanks, uh, somewhat known as your sewer. So you'll see here, there is a bayonet fitting covering a large valve. Um, this is where you will attach your sewer hose. Uh, so you will have a similar bayonet fitting on the end of your sewer hose that will attach onto this pipe. And then you're gonna run your sewer hose uh, to the dump station at the campsite, typically a small pipe located somewhere within five to 10 feet of your trailer. Um, once you have your sewer hose set up and in place, you'll notice these valves here, uh, one's black, uh, two of them are gray. On this unit specifically, we have two gray tanks. We have one that uh, services the kitchen sink and a second gray tank that services the uh, bathroom sink and the shower. Your black is going to be the sewer. Uh, so once you're set up with your sewer hose and ready to drain your tanks, you're gonna start by pulling the black valve over here to drain the black tank. Um, once that has drained itself out, you will then follow that by draining your gray tanks to help wash out that hose and clear everything out. After that's all finished, you're gonna close your valves back up to make sure that uh, they're set and ready to go for the next time that you need to drain because you do have to keep your valves closed at all time so the pressure can build up in your tanks and you'll be able to actually drain your tanks. If you leave the valves open when you're hooked up at your campsite, we'll actually end up with low pressure and you can get clogs in the line. On the back here, we have a cable and satellite access port. So if you happen to be at one of those rare campsites that does have free cable, or you do have a third party satellite you wanna hook up, uh, you can run your uh, coax to this, which will provide the signal to the rest of your trailer and all the outputs on the trailer. Um, over here, we've got the house for your power cable. Uh, this unit has a 25 foot power cable. Um, it feeds back into a little box inside there. So once you're finished with it, you can just kind of push it back inside to store it. Um, you do want to make sure that when you're all finished, you do close this trap here. So uh, otherwise, it's a good spot for mice and rodents and things like that to sneak their way into your trailer. Uh, down here we have your city water connection. Uh, so this is going to be the access to your fresh water at most service campsites. Uh, so you will need a fresh water hose to attach to the, ta the tap at the campground uh, and then hook it onto your trailer to provide your trailer with pressurized water. 
Um, we do recommend that you have a pressure regulator on the tap at the campground. That's going to uh, keep your water pressure from going over 45 PSI. Uh, the reason you want to keep it under that level is because your trailer is made up of PEX tubing and those little PEX tubes are secured by little clamps and anything over 45 uh, PSI is going to split those apart and you're going to end up with leaks inside your trailer. So always, always have a water pressure regulator on the tap at the campground. Below your city water connection here we've got uh, your black tank flush. Uh, so what this is going to do for you is going to allow you to hook up a garden hose to this and spray pressurized water directly into your black tank to clear that out and help with uh, draining your tanks. You want to make sure that when you are using your black tank flush that you do have your black valve open on the side as we showed you earlier there. Uh, otherwise the water is going to fill up the tank and then eventually come out the roof and you definitely don't want that. Uh, up here we have the operation for your uh, electric stabilizing legs. Uh, these jacks are just to stabilize the trailer. Uh, they are not to level the trailer. Uh, you will do the leveling of your trailer underneath your tires with some blocks. These stabilizing legs, they just take the shake out of your trailer when you're walking around inside, so they give you a little bit of extra stability. Uh, if you were to level the trailer with these stabilizing legs, they would actually buckle and break on you, and then they would not be covered under your warranty. So once you, once you see your stabilizing legs touch the ground there and they begin to slightly raise the trailer, that's right where you want to stop. These electric stabilizing legs are actually an upgrade option on some of the hideout units. Many of the hideout units will have a uh, manual stabilizing jack which you will crank down with a hand crank. Up here we've got your uh, utility shower. So it's going to be a small outdoor shower that you can use to wash off your feet when you come back from the beach, wash off the dogs, uh, stuff like that. So once again you're going to use your common key, your 751 key to open this lock. Uh, and then you'll see here we have a little shower with a shut off on the nozzle as well as a couple set of taps for hot and cold. Um, mostly self-explanatory this shower is but you do want to keep in mind that uh, even though there's a shut off on the handle you should turn off the taps in here otherwise you will lose water pressure from the interior of the trailer. Here we've got your outdoor kitchen which is a lovely feature to have because if you're cooking any of your smelly fish or anything like that you don't have to uh, do that inside. So once again, we're going to use our 751 key to open this up. And we'll latch our door up here so we can keep it out of the way. Inside we've got a uh, 110 only fridge. So this fridge here is going to work only when you are plugged into a park box and receiving power. Uh, it is not propane and it does not run off of your battery. Here we have your outdoor stove. Uh, so great for keeping your cooking mess outside. Uh, it's got two burners on here. You do have to light this with the barbecue lighter, uh, so you're just going to turn your nozzles to light and then stick your barbecue lighter in there and light them. Uh, this will run off the trailer's propane. Uh, so there is a propane hose which you must connect every time you go to use this. Uh, yep, that hose there is a quick connect that runs underneath the trailer uh, to right down here. Uh, here we have your outdoor speakers, so you have two speakers there that you can control from inside, so once we get in the trailer, we'll show you how to operate those. Uh, this is the exhaust vent for your range hood above your stove, uh, so you do need to make sure that this is open when you're using it, and you don't want to snap it closed when you're driving. Uh, this here is the back of your refrigerator. Uh, there's not a whole lot to talk about with this, but there is a condensation drip that's important to note here. Uh, this uh, hose must be sticking outside of this vent at all times, uh, otherwise you will be dripping water inside the trailer. Uh, down here we do have a cable satellite output if you want to hook up a TV, as well as some 110 outlets to hook that up to. Uh, and then we have the back of your furnace here. When you do have your furnace on, this does get quite hot, so if you do have small children around, uh, make sure they don't touch this. One thing to note about these, this furnace area, uh, bees, hornets, and wasps, they do really like the smell of propane, so you want to keep an eye on the back of your furnace as well as your fridge vent and your hot water heater uh, to make sure that you aren't getting any nests built in there. Here we have the fresh water fill, uh, so you're going to use this if you're doing any dry camping uh, where you won't have access to water service. Uh, this is a little cap that screws off here and you just stick your garden hose in the tank to fill that up. Um, once your tank is filled, uh, water will come out of this little screen here uh, to let you know that it's filled so do be careful if you're standing in front of that it does come out of there pretty furiously so you may get wet um, and then you can see underneath here we have this white handle 
Uh, this is actually the drain for your freshwater tank. So once you're finished camping, if you uh, have some excess water that you don't want to tow home with you, you can just pull that valve there to drain your freshwater tank. Uh, this here is the back of your hot water heater. Um, so you will access this if you need to winterize your trailer or summarize your trailer. Inside here, we've got a, a few important things to note. So down here in the corner, uh, we have a little on-off switch. That is a man or that is an override for your electric element. Uh, so you want to make sure that when you are not using your trailer, you do have that switched off so that no one will accidentally light your hot water heater uh, from inside with no hot water in the tank as the element can burn itself out or actually melt the tank. Um, when you are using your trailer though, you do want to have that switch switched on to use your electric element. Uh, down here we have the anode rod. Uh, that rod will protect your tank uh, from harsh minerals in the water. So essentially it's a rod that you insert there to uh, take the, the harsh minerals out of the water so that they don't rust the, the water tank. Um, this water heater is equipped with a steel hot water tank so you have an aluminum uh, anode rod slotted in there to protect that tank. Uh, you will need to check that once a season to make sure that it is, is uh, not too corroded. Um, and when it does corrode too much, you do want to replace those uh, typically once every two years. This anode rod also serves as a plug for the hot water tank itself. So when you go to drain your tank, you will remove the rod to actually drain the water out. And up here we have the blow off valve. Uh, this will relieve the pressure from your lines when you go to winterize the trailer. All hot out models are going to come with a key that look, looks like this, typically going to be purple. Uh, that key is going to operate uh, both your top and bottom locks. Um, if you have two doors like this unit, you will have a separate key, one for each door. Uh, the top lock here is the lock that locks the little handle latch here. And the bottom one is actually the lock for the deadbolt. Uh, if you ever happen to drop your trailer off for service to us, uh, you want to make sure that you only lock the top latch as we are able to open those. But if you lock the deadbolt, we won't be able to get into your trailer to service it. So with your awnings, there's a few things you want to note first and foremost. Uh, if it's windy outside, you want to take your awnings in. If you happen to be leaving your campsite at all, even just to go next door, you want to take your awning in. If you're going inside for any extended period of time, make sure you take your awning in. If it starts to rain too heavily outside, make sure you take your awning in as well. Uh, the Solera awnings are all equipped with two shocks here, um, one of which uh, is lighter than the other. So if it does rain and there is some rain pooling on top of your awning, one arm will drop itself to allow the water to run off, but you still don't want to have your awning outside if it's raining too heavily, especially because there's usually a wind associated with the, the rain. Um, we have an arms on either side of your awning here, which will allow you to actually change the pitch of your awning. If you drop both arms down, you can lower the angle of your awning. Uh, make sure you put those arms back up in a fairly straight position before you uh, retract your awning, as they will catch if they're not back up to their upright position. Uh, and the last thing we want to note about the awning here, uh, you can see there, there's a little flap hanging down. Uh, that's about where you want to stop with your awning. Uh, if you were to keep going, you'd see the black metal tube that the awning is wrapped around. Uh, the reason you want to stop right there is because that's keeping one full wrap of the awning around that metal tube, which is keeping the awning tight on top. Um, if you were to keep going, you'd end up losing some of the awning strength, and if water did pool up there, it would actually stretch the end of the awning as it kind of starts to sag. The other thing to note with your awnings, uh, you do want to use just something kind of organic or safe just dish soaps things like that to clean your awnings with you never want to use any harsh chemicals or heavy bleaches on your awnings uh, here we have the control center for your hideout um, you'll see here you've got a panel that has uh, the gauges for your different tanks um, on this unit specifically we do have a set of gray tanks gray one and two um, but we only have the one black tank some hideout units will have two black tanks, uh, some will only have one gray tank. So it will let you know that tanks do vary by models, so this may not be uh, specific to your unit. Uh, these gauges will allow you to know when your battery is full and when it is draining, as well as whether or not your tanks are empty and as they progress their way towards full. Uh, down here we have the uh, switches for your hot water heater. Uh, so you have a gas switch and an electric switch. 
this will allow you to light the water heater um, on either gas or electric or you can actually use both uh, if you would like your water to heat up faster uh, on average it takes about 10 minutes for the water to go from uh, you know lukewarm to, to heat it up uh, we have your water pump there you may be able to hear that there that will be used if you are using your fresh water tank uh, to pump water into your system um, if you're hooked up to the city water connection at a campground you won't need to use your water pump the only other time you would use your water pump is if you were going to winterize your trailer uh, you will then use your water pump to pump antifreeze into your lines um, we've got the switch for the awning to uh, extend and retract your awning as well as the uh, lights for the LED strip underneath the awning um, here we have the operation for your slide room uh, so once the walkthrough is finished there we'll put the slide in to see how that works and then we have a set of lights for you as well that control the overhead lights in your trailer all those lights can individually be turned off if you don't want them all on at the same time uh, in the hideout unit, you do have these metal blinds, uh, typically have them in your houses. So one difference here is these do secure to the wall when you're driving so they don't uh, rattle around. Uh, so you will need to unhook your blinds uh, down here before you go to raise and lower them. Uh, the windows uh, do open so they just slide up with two latches at the top and they lock in place. Uh, make sure you do close your windows before you tow your trailer. Up here we have your carbon monoxide detector. Uh, you should check this frequently, preferably pre-trip if you can, but at least once a month if not. Uh, it, you just press this button here to test your detector and you will probably need to change the batteries about once a year. Uh, below that we have your emergency exit window. Uh, so you just lift up on this red handle here to open that up and then push out. If you want to actually exit the window, you just push this handle all the way out, um, but you can also use it as a a uh, latch to hold your window open uh, so you can get a cross breeze in your bedroom. Another nice feature of the hideout units is the storage located under your bed. Um, so this one here is equipped with struts to hold it up out of the way for you when you are getting your things in and out of the storage here. Uh, here we have another emergency exit window. Uh, to operate this window you just pull up on these caps and push out and the whole window swings out. So if your hideout comes equipped with the booth style dinette um, and you have the telescoping table here uh, it does turn into quite a sizable bed. In order to do that, you just actually put your foot down on the table here, pull out on this knob, and lower the table down into place. The table then rests on the ledge on the edges of the dinette, and you can take your back cushions there and slot them into place to make a reasonably cozy bed. Uh, this here is a jackknife sofa, so it does actually fold out into a small little bed. Uh, in order to do so, you just lift up on the bottom of the couch, and it just falls into place. Uh, to put the sofa back up, you do the reverse, but make sure you grab the top of the couch there and pull it back into place. Here we have the temperature controls for your unit. Uh, this thermostat controls both your air conditioner and your furnace. Um, your air conditioner will operate on uh, 110 power only, so only when you are plugged into a 30 amp park box. The furnace uh, operates off propane and is usable on both the battery and when you are plugged into a park box. Uh, in order to operate your furnace, you just take this switch here, switch it to the heat setting, and then control your temperature up top. And you can hear the furnace click in there. In order to operate your air conditioner, you just actually switch this over to the cool setting and lower your temperature down until the air conditioner kicks in. When operating your air conditioner and your furnace, make sure that the fan setting is on auto at all times. Uh, that will allow the furnace and the air conditioner to kick in and out and regulate themselves. Um, if you are to use the fan setting specifically, uh, you can control your fan speeds with the rest of the auto settings over here. Our air conditioner is equipped with vents on the side that allow you to more quickly cool down your main area. As well, when these vents are closed, your air will primarily come out of these ducts that do rotate. All hideout units are equipped with a standard ventilation fan for your exhaust for your shower. Uh, it has a manual crank to allow you to open the vent, as well as a switch to operate the fan. Here at Stones RV, we like to put um, an additional cover on top of all your vents. Uh, they're a curved plastic cover that allow you to keep your vents open when it's raining, as well as have your vents open when you drive. 
This here is a pretty standard looking RV toilet, um, but it also serves a secondary function. This is how you're going to prime your black tank every time you uh, set up for your camping trip. Uh, so what you'll do is when you have your, your RV set up and you come inside to repair your black tank, you'll open up your toilet, uh, you'll take your little enzyme, uh, it's typically either a liquid or a small pouch, uh, you'll put that into the toilet and then you'll hold down on the toilet flush here for about a minute and a half. What that's going to do is that's going to run some fresh water into that tank and create a base to allow your enzyme to dissolve into the water and that will break down all the waste in the paper that's put into your black tank and make it easier to flush the tank. This here is your GFI plug. Um, typically at home you probably have one of these in your bathroom. What it is is a, a sensor that uh, will automatically trip if it senses moisture. The difference between your house and a trailer uh, is the GFI operates all of the 110 outlets on the entire trailer. Um, so if any of them happen to trip, then you will need to reset them from this reset box here in the bathroom. In order to reset your, uh, your 110 outlets here, you'll just hit, hit the red reset button in the center of the GFI outlet. Here we have your entertainment system. Uh, this unit comes equipped with a TV uh, and a stereo that functions as a radio, a DVD player. Uh, it also has Bluetooth functions as well as auxiliary ports and USB ports. Uh, to allow you to hook up all your media to it in separate ways. Um, we actually have two sets of speaker zones here as well. Um, up here we have controls for zone 1 and zone 2. Um, zone 1 will operate our interior speakers and zone 2 will operate those out exterior speakers we saw earlier. Um, if you want to set up your phone with Bluetooth on this stereo, uh, you just hit the Bluetooth button here and use pair code 0000 to pair your Bluetooth device with it. This is a standard Dometic fridge. It's in uh, quite a few of our units. Uh, it operates on both propane uh, and uh, AC power. So uh, up here we have two buttons. We have an auto and off switch as well as the auto and gas button. Um, the auto and gas button here is going to allow you to switch between the automatic mode which will uh, use AC power every time it is available, uh, so every time you're plugged into a park box or anything like that, or a generator, um, and we'll automatically switch to propane gas if your propane is open and you happen to lose power. Uh, if you want to just specifically use gas, you can press this button and pull it out there. Uh, you'll notice the light goes out, and that'll allow you to use specifically propane gas. Um, if the check light comes on, then you'll know that you're getting low on propane. Inside the fridge here, uh, we have this large metal fin up here, uh, and that is responsible for the cooling of your fridge. Um, if you can see inside here, we have a little thermostat that slides inside this plastic clip. Uh, that is what actually regulates the temperature. So you need to make sure that this clip and this thermostat are attached to this metal fin at all times. And then, in order to actually change the temperature of your fridge, you just slide this up and down uh, along the fin, and the lower you are, the warmer it will be. The higher you are, the cooler your fridge will be. The last thing to tell you about your fridge there, uh, they do come equipped with these little plastic clips. Uh, they are to be used for wintertime storage only, never when you are actually op um, towing your trailer. And they'll just allow you to keep your uh, fridge door from completely closing, which will give you some ventilation as you store it over the winter months. This here is the house for your uh, breaker panel as well as all the fuses. All the breakers here are labeled as well as the fuses. And if any of your fuses happen to burn out on you, uh, there is a little red light that shows up alongside the fuse to let you know that it's burned out. And you can actually see it through the front of the panel here. Here we have a standard microwave. Uh, one good thing to note with your microwave uh, is the best way to check and see that you're receiving power from your park box. Um, if your microwave is lit up, then you'll know you're receiving power from that, as your microwave is a 110 appliance only, so it will not work on your battery operation. Um, below that, we have a little light and exhaust fan for your stove, so once again, remember that that outside um, vent is open when you're using this. Um, and then we have a uh, stove top here. Uh, in order to light that, you must have a barbecue lighter on hand. Uh, you'll turn the nozzles here over to the light setting. Make sure your propane is open outside to light these. And then you'll just stick your barbecue lighter in here and light all your burners. 
The front of the burner trio is the a, the larger, hotter burner of the three. So that is where you want to cook things like potatoes. Uh, make sure you never put too large of a pot on top of your burners. Um, if you do, you can actually trap the heat underneath the pot and it will scald the top of the grate here. So try to keep it limited to a medium sized pot. So in order to use your oven, uh, you will have to light your pilot light every time you go to use it. Uh, in order to light your pilot light, you start by turning this knob up here to the pilot light setting and pressing in. Uh, and then you take your barbecue lighter, reach back inside there, and make sure that you're on top of the pilot light. So you can see it's glowing blue inside there. Then you can slowly release the knob. Make sure your pilot light doesn't go out. And then slowly turn it over to the heat to get the entire bar to light up. Um, once that bar is lit up, your oven will come up to temperature. And as your oven raises up to the correct temperature, uh, the flame from that bar will actually go back to just the pilot light. And that will allow you to know that your oven is up to the correct cooking temperature. Um, when you turn your oven off, make sure that it is completely off and the pilot light is out. As I mentioned earlier, you do need to relight the pilot light every time you go to use your oven. And this is where your propane gas detector is located. Uh, this is very important to monitor and make sure it is working at all times. You need to have a battery hookup or a power source in order for your propane gas detector to be powered um, as it is hardwired into the trailer. And here is your central vac, uh, standard in most hideout units. Uh, to operate this, you just turn the power on here and make sure you have your hose attached uh, to the opening in the front. To change the bag, you just slide this panel sideways, pull on this latch, and open it up. And the bag just slides on here with a rubber flange. Inside all hideout units, you'll find a blue keystone bag uh, filled with all the owner's manuals for your appliances. Uh, as well, inside this bag, there are warranty cards for your specific appliances, as some of those appliances are not covered under your manufacturer's warranty and do have their own manufacturer's warranty. So make sure once you get home that you take a look through this bag, fill out all the warranty cards, and submit them as applicable. So that was a thorough walkthrough of a standard hideout towable. Uh, not all hideouts will have all the features we went over here today. Uh, so if your unit does have some differences that we didn't cover and you do have some more questions that you'd like addressed on those, feel free to contact us on our Facebook page or at stonesrv.com.